Hello friends, welcome to another important lecture by All Learn and Law team the world of medical video lectures. Today we are going to talk about a very important disease that is diabetes and specifically diabetic retinopathy. As we all know the prevalence of diabetes is increasing hence uh, we expect the diabetic retinopathy as well to increase in prevalence. A major meta-analysis of about 23,000 individuals with diabetes from uh, 35 studies showed one in three patients at any point will have diabetic retinopathy and about 7% of them will have proliferative diabetic retinopathy and around 7% will have diabetic macular edema. This Wisconsin epidemiological study of diabetic retinopathy showed the rate of progression of diabetic retinopathy is very high. In about 83% of the people, the retinopathy progresses over a period of time. And in about 40% of them, it progresses to proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which puts the patient at risk of blindness. And Encouragingly, about 18% of the people do notice an improvement in their retinopathy with good control of diabetes and other risk factors. So, what is this retinal screening? Retinal screening is basically taking the photographs of the retina that is the back of the eye and then it is graded for the severity of the diabetic retinopathy and according to the severity of the retinopathy, the patients are referred or called into the hospital for an assessment by the ophthalmologist and accordingly the treatment is offered. For example, in United Kingdom, any patient who is diagnosed diabetic who is 12 years or more is invited to have their eyes screened once a year and if there is anything which needs the referral to the hospital, the patients are offered the appointment at the hospital for assessment and then treatment. The main pathology in diabetic retinopathy or for that matter for any complications, microvascular complications because of the diabetes are due to the hyperglycemia causing release of VEGF that is vascular endothelial growth factors and alteration in the retinal blood flow resulting in vas increased vascular permeability thickening of the basement membrane and loss of pericytes. Once the pericytes are lost, there is leakage of uh, the exudates and the blood components leading to all the manifestations that we will be discussing happen. And if the ischemia is severe, then it can lead to retinal neovascularization, which is nothing but proliferative diabetic retinopathy leading to it is very important to remember the loss of vision is a very late manifestation in diabetic retinopathy. So a patient who complains of uh, blurring or loss of vision in diabetes generally suggests that the retinopathy is quite advanced. And the major reasons for loss of vision in diabetic retinopathy are either it is a macular edema or it's a vitreous hemorrhage or it can be because of the tractional retinal detachment or it can be because of the neovascular glaucoma. There are different classifications that are used for uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, the most commonly that we use is mild, moderate, non proliferative diabetic retinopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Mild to moderate non proliferative diabetic retinopathy shows features such as microaneurysms which are small outpouchings in the capillary walls which are seen as a small tiny dots and dot and blot hemorrhages which are hemorrhages in the deeper layers of the retina hard exudates which are leakage of lipids from the capillaries moderate to severe non proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by intraretinal microvascular abnormalities or uh, 
multiple retinal hemorrhages in all the four quadrants. The proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by presence of new vessels at the disc which is called as NVD or new vessels elsewhere on the retina called as NVE or retinal detachment, pre-retinal hemorrhage or vitreous hemorrhage. Let us try to understand these retinal hemorrhages. There are two different types of retinal hemorrhages like uh, dot and dot hemorrhages which are hemorrhages at the outer plexiform and inner nuclear layers. They are quite deep in their position and they appear like dot and blot just like the way uh, the hemorrhage or the ink expands when you put a tissue paper. Uh, whereas the flame shaped hemorrhages, they are the hemorrhages in the superficial nerve fiber layer of the retina and they tend to appear like the flame uh, in the form of a layer because these are superficial they resemble the flame that's why they're called as flame shaped hemorrhages another very common finding that you see in patients with diabetic retinopathy is hard exudates uh, remember the hard exudates are not seen only in diabetic retinopathy they can be seen in other retinal vascular disorders they are basically collection of lipids due to the microvascular leakage they appear as yellow refractile dots or they may have different shapes and they have the affinity towards the posterior pole which is nothing but uh, the macular area and is one of the reason for loss of vision in diabetic retinopathy. Another clinical feature is soft exudates which are nothing but cottonwool spots. These represent the infarction of the nerve fiber layer of the retina. The site of cottonwool spots and the flame shaped hemorrhages is just the same layer that is the nerve fiber layer of retina. These appear as fluffy white and they do have irregular borders and uh, they do have striations of the nerve fiber layer. When we compare the soft exudates and the hard exudates, the hard exudates are the lipids which leak and they are very refractile and they are quite deep and they are small and they do have well defined borders whereas the cottonwool spots they are larger irregular superficial in their position